Hi, my name's Dean Walton, and uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to build a straw airplane with a real working airfoil. And that is something that actually gives the plane lift and makes it fly like a real airplane. And so in a sense, this will be different than most other paper airplanes that you've built that really don't have what would be a true airfoil. This one really is a true airfoil. So it's easy to build. We can do it in probably 20 minutes. Um, it takes just eight straws, a couple pieces of paper, uh, some tape, scissors, one penny. Um, but before that, I kind of want to introduce myself. So um, again, I am Dean Walton. I am the uh, Lori I. Loki Science and Technology Outreach Librarian at the University of Oregon. And um, I get students um, involved using technology to help them explore and do research. So you know, libraries have changed quite a bit from um, the past. You know, it used to be that you know, libraries were the place where you just stored books. And those books are really important to help people do research. But today, we foster research in numerous other ways that you probably wouldn't have imagined you know, even five, ten years ago. We help people build 3D models. We do work with um, augmented reality. Um, we help with visualizations. Here I am getting students building robotic vehicles that we actually put in rockets, launch up into the air. These things come down, um, navigate across the desert, do wild things. Um, making slinky seismometers to detect earthquakes. So that's kind of what I do. And I get students involved making things so they actually can collect data and do something with what, they, what they've what they used. Um, but I've only been doing this about, uh, about half my career. I do have to say that, and I'll show you these pictures right about now, that um, I started off as a field biologist, a field ecologist. It's what I really wanted to do throughout my young life. Since fourth grade, I really wanted to be a field ecologist or biologist. I didn't know ecology back then, so. But I wanted to do somebody, you know, explore the outside. And um, so I went to school for that. Um, I volunteered at places uh, where I could do that kind of work so I could learn about what people did outside. So volunteering was an important part of my um, career learning um, background. So getting a chance to learn what people did in different places. Um, so I did that even in high school um, and in college. I volunteered in many places to get more experience doing kind of field work related things. And here you can see a picture of me um, actually hanging out in a really big tree. Um, I didn't do any really big tree things as a field ecologist, but I did do a lot of cliff work looking at lichens. So that was kind of a cool thing. I'm going to show you some other pictures here. We're going to flip through these things. So I'll go to my next picture. Yeah, there I am out in the field uh, collecting data at Shenandoah National Park. So I'm actually doing a botanical survey where I'm trying to determine all the different plants that are in that area. Uh, there I am with the uh, Park Service botanist and obviously I'm the guy there on the on the right hand side and uh, uh, Becky is over there on the left hand side and so that was kind of fun and you can see that was back in 2001 still doing field work then uh, I'm also a firm believer of taking kids to work and that's really in a sense the reason that I changed from my field job to this current job uh, I loved what I did, but I was out in the field, um, I would leave Monday and get back Friday, and from basically April until um, probably around October. And I yeah, did that for year after year after year, and I loved it, but when I became a dad, I wanted to see my kid grow up, and I wanted to be around my daughter as she was growing up. So I changed from being a field person to this new career, I do a lot more science education and it kept me around the house but even back then you can see when my daughter was pretty young um, I got her out in the field and there I am doing a uh, herp survey we're looking for lizards and snakes uh, out in the area of Virginia uh, but even more recently even as being uh, in this current position I still got my daughter out in the field to do things that I loved and she seemed to like it too 
And here we are getting into dry suits and we're gonna go snorkel a few local ponds that are near the river looking for freshwater mussels that are sort of uncommon in our area. So we're doing a, a freshwater mussel. And what I mean here is like bivalves, like clamshell kind of things. So we're looking for something like that. We're looking for, you might say seashells, but they're not from the sea. They're from, from the river or from this pond. And so we're putting on dry suits to go explore that stuff. But probably more typically, I give lectures and things like this. I teach classes. Um, and so I do a lot of things like that. Um, but I do fun things like here I am uh, using drones to do conservation work. So we're using drones to go out and detect um, what is rare in a certain area to do plant surveys. And that was just, just a few years ago. Uh, even more recently, here are some students from the University of Oregon, and we've got them building a robotic, actually it's this thing right here, a robotic sensor system that gets put in a rocket, it goes up to 12,000 feet, comes down by parachute, and then navigates across the desert to collect data. Uh, there's the rocket. You can see where that uh, robot was sitting. And we did that um, one year. Uh, we did it another year. And we've done it another year. So we've done this for three years now of doing some really cool stuff. So those are some of the things that I do, in a sense, as a librarian. Uh, I help a lot of fostering research. Um, Libraries still exist with books, and I help people find information uh, on the computer, uh, find the best resources. But myself and my colleagues do a lot of things that I don't think many people realize that we do as librarians. Um, but this kind of is my world. It's building environmental sensor systems to collect data, get students involved, uh, help them understand science, technology, and doing really kind of fun things. Uh, there's the last picture of some folks. So, we are now going to move on to making our first plane. And I thank you for listening for me. And so uh, we're going to change gears and we're going to start building this plane. All right, so now we're going to start working on our airplane. It does have a working airfoil. That is our goal to have this, what is a real airfoil. It gives the plane lift. The plane has a top side. It has two straws on top. And then it has a single straw on the bottom and the penny is on the bottom side. All right we build. So we have nine straws in the kit. We have a piece of paper like this, two black lines, one wide piece, two narrow pieces, penny. Then we have a sheet of paper that has two things on it. This side here, that side there. To begin with, we're going to start right here. I've already pre-cut part of it just to make this faster, but we're going to cut our pieces apart. Like so. We have, this will be our measuring device. This will be our tail fin. And this will use to attach our wing to the airframe. All right, so put those aside for the moment. But we have those three pieces. Next thing, we have eight straws. Or really, we have nine straws. One is extra in case we mess up. We'll put that aside, giving our eight straws. All right, right now we need two straws. So we'll take the two straws, put them down. We're gonna flatten these out to um, they don't roll anymore. So basically I'm gonna put my finger here, press down from the center and then squeeze it outwards. Repeat, press down, squeeze outwards. I'm gonna grab a pencil, push across, like so, flip it over, push it across, like so. That is now a flattened straw. Repeat the process. Push down in the center, work your way out from the center, flatten, roll over, flatten, flatten. Done. Two flat straws. All right. We're going to take a piece of paper with a penny, our measuring device. Take a straw, put it along one edge, find the end point of the straw. You make a line there. You fold this over like that. 
find the crease right there. That is the center point of our straw. Put a straw there. Mark. Flattened straw has a center line. We repeat the process. Straw. Get it lined up. Center line. Done. Two flat straws. Two center lines. Put this away for the moment. All right. Next thing. We need two pair of straws, like so. We are going to grab some tape, and we are going to go in about one inch from the edge, and we're going to wrap our tape around. We need to make sure we get the tape flat to begin with, wrapping around so it at least covers it fully around, but we want to use as little tape as we can. That's done. You flip it over. Again, leave about one inch showing. Flatten the tape flat. Then wrap all the way around. That is done. On one side, just mark a line right across there. Actually, I should be using my marker pen right here. And I want to do just a single line across. All right, that part is done. I am using masking tape, painter's tape, so you can see the tape that I'm using. You should be using masking tape like this, that's clear and thin, but you just can't see that in the video, so I wanted to show you this with the painter's tape so you can see what I'm doing, but you wanna use this kind of tape, all right? We're gonna repeat the process almost exactly the same. Two straws, show about an inch, put the tape, flatten it, wrap it around, that part is done. But now on this side, we wanna have at least three inches showing. So I'm gonna put my piece of tape down about there. Maybe even a tad more, right about there. And then wrap, flatten, wrap around. All right, so that's what the two things look like. I need to put a line. So the side that has the greater amount showing I'm gonna put two lines on that. All right, so, almost identical. Identical down here, offset right there compared to that. One line, two lines. We're good, all right. Now we're gonna put it so that the unmarked ends are in the center, in the sides that have lines, outwards. Notice that the top sides don't have anything. So we're gonna have lines just on one side. We grab a fifth straw. We're going to attach it, basically the line that has the two edges. Showing we're gonna come down here and we're gonna tape this straw where these two meet and then basically where it ends on each other straw. So it's going to sit right about like so. The first thing to do is to grab this end, put that there. I have one small piece of tape. It's not quite long enough. Put that around like so. That part is done. Let me get a slightly longer piece. I want to make sure these go all the way around. Pieces there. All right, now again. And there, and there, these sides where they hit each other, I'm gonna tape. Right there. And now we're gonna tape it right there and fix that joint, that connection right there, flatten it. wrap around. That is our airframe. You'll be doing it again with the masking tape, not with the painter's tape. All right, with the black lines showing upwards, we're gonna take our penny. We're gonna take a penny off here. We're gonna go to the end with only a single line. This has the longer edge that has the shorter bit of straw showing. 
So the one end that has just the one line, we're gonna tape our penny into place there. Like so. So it covers up that black line. And in fact, we may want to, in this case, we can add some extra tape at this one particular place to ensure that penny stays in spot. All right, so again, we have the two lines showing here with the longer section. The area here had one line, it's where the penny is now um, attached. That's good there. And put that aside for the moment. We're gonna grab what will be our airfoil. So, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna fold this in half on this line right here. Um, find the middle point there, come out, like so, fold it on the midline, creased on that longer line right there. All right, now we grab one of our flattened straws. We're gonna cut the flattened straw in half at the midline. I have two pieces. They're gonna get taped in place right here. So I have one piece, Tape down, like that. My other piece here, part's a little long. Tape down, one last piece right here. Actually, I'm gonna grab a few more of these pieces. I'll need three for this moment. And one more and basically grab a round straw. These are flattened. So these are the flattened straws. A round straw is gonna sit right here. It's gonna sit on top of the flattened straws, but on the line right here. So it has to be, if this is where the fold is, we want that to sit right there. And it needs to cross both flattened straws and then I take that in the position right there. Like so, should be good. Two last pieces of tape right there. And right there. All right, again, you'd be using masking tape, I'm using the painter's tape. Now we're gonna fold this over like so, and we're gonna try to pull it so that it comes close to touching the back end. But because of the straw, it can't make it all the way there. So we carefully pull it taut from that center line, right about so, and I put another piece of tape right there. At this point, I'm gonna use masking tape because I don't need to see the rest, and we're just gonna tape that whole flappy edge across and down, like so. Do the same thing here, across there. Like so. It doesn't extend over the edge, but there is our working airfoil. It's flat on the bottom side, it has the curved top part, and it also has a high point. And so, the high point of the wing is right about there. I'll make a dot right there. That's gonna be a very important part for figuring out how the airplane flies. Because where this part is in relation to the airframe is what makes it all work. That's an important thing. It won't work unless they're in the exact right spot. But that is our wing. Our wing is good for now. Next piece. This is the wider of the three pieces of paper. We had the one that was our penny, which we used to measure with. This will be our tail fin in a few minutes. This we're gonna to use to help attach the wing to the airframe or the airframe to the wing. And so I'm gonna lay it flat. I am gonna fold up just about a quarter inch. Like so, you can probably get an idea of how that looks like so. Just like that. I'm gonna come here 
I'm gonna put this about where that center is right there and I'm just gonna start rolling it so we don't tape this at all we just need to roll this part up and it needs to be rolled fairly tight but not too tight and we know how tight it is um, if we pull it tight and you're not like really really forcing it tight but you do it tightly you'll be in good shape you don't need to really work to get it tight but just make sure it's tight you roll it up and then at the end we can tape our straw closed we want to make sure that we don't touch the straw or take the straw from the airframe we want it to be able to move back and forth like this all right but we don't want it to be so so loose that it slides right all the way off we want you know we want to be able to make sure there's some friction there that holds the wing in place all right so we're good there now we get our wing we're going to turn it upside down and we see the two layers here for where our straws are going to be so the wing has a front end let me put that dot so with the dot there i'll put a dot in the back side there this is the front of our airplane so that's the front of the airplane back of the airplane turn it upside down here's our straw make sure we have your orientation up here penny is up front front of airplane front of airplane get that lined up that's going to sit and get taped in place right there tail of airplane front of airplane penny front of curve two lines back of plane we're going to grab our tape here you can see we can deal with a lot longer tape across here and we're going to use three pieces of tape to tape that into position and it's important that we just tape the tape onto that rolled piece of paper that's where we want to take so we want to make sure that we can move this wing around because we still need to figure out where this point needs to be on the airframe again the penny's here the penny is underneath the wing so there's the wing penny and then there's the rest of the tail all right good so far tail fin we fold it in half we have a v we fold it inwards into that crest or into that valley like so you could almost form a square out of this but fold like that and now we're going to fold it like so and it'll make a w all right there's our w we're going to hold it back up and we know that that's the top of the w right there black dot there put a little dot there we're just gonna draw a line from the midline to midline there right across so that we create a triangle we leave a little bit there a little bit there we're just cutting up the top part and again there is the W like so cut across like that now we have our W, both angles cut. This is our tail fin. We're gonna lay it flat for a second. I'm gonna grab a piece of tape right here just to close that together. Like so, only on the front side. I'm gonna turn it upside down. I'm gonna put another piece of tape right there. It's our tail fin, looks good. All right, plain top side bottom side bottom side or excuse me top side bottom side make sure the bottom side's showing right now edge of the desk we're gonna slide our tail fin in right there there's the top of the plane that's how it's gonna look like so 
we are going to get that flip it over now and now we're going to tape our um, tail fin in place so tail fin in place top of plane plane in effect now this plane is finished with one minor exception and it's the most critical part of the whole thing is that we still need to figure out where the wing needs to be on the plane so how do we do this what we need to do is we need to figure out where the plane bounces on our finger which in this case is let's see right about there but now the dot is ahead of my finger so I need to figure I need to be able to move the dot a little bit and it's just trial and error we're gonna move it back a little bit and of course every time we do this it moves the position of where it balances so this we have to do several times to figure out where everything needs to be and now figure out where it is now it's even further back so I may need to make the plane forwards let's see now no we go back further okay so now I went in here trial and error going back and forth I was able to find a point where the plane balances on my finger and the wing the dotted wing is over my finger which is right about there so that is about where we need it to be in fact we think that's gonna be where it's gonna be I'm gonna grab one last piece of tape tape that so at this point we're crossing the wing and taping the wing in place so it is actually to the airframe so that when it flies in um, it doesn't well when it flies and it lands the wing can move forward and backwards so at some point we want to make sure the wing is right in the right spot so I'm gonna put a line right here where that wing was so the front of the wing front of that tube so I know where that is that's my initial test spot I may need to move this back and forth a little bit a quarter inch either way to get this to fly but the important thing is is that again I have a point here where I can get a straw to balance it's my center of gravity so gravity is pulling straight down but the wing because it has lift is pulling the plane straight up because what happens when the air goes past here air below is going straight across air top has to go up it means it's going faster to get over the wing it creates an area of low pressure so air comes underneath and pushes the plane up it's directly opposing gravity so the point where we can get this to balance is where gravity is directly above below us and then lift is pulling the plane upwards if so we have lift gravity when they are opposed to each other the plane can fly if the lift is forward then the plane is just going to go straight up if lift is behind the center of gravity then it's top it's front heavy and the plane just nose dives so nose dives flies goes straight up falls backwards we think we have the right spot we can try to get the balance pretty good we give it a try we'll see what happens we'll move the video see what we can see from here bring this up and we'll give it our first try and see how we'll, well we do not too bad what I saw is I probably need to have the wing just probably two millimeters a quarter maybe an eighth of an inch back further and it'll probably fly a little bit longer uh, flatter but that's it we have now made a paper airplane or a straw airplane um, with a working airfoil so hopefully that's cool and I thank you and hope you learn maybe a little physics along the way too so that's my goal take care thank you